So we are focused on increasing paychecks in a major way. And we know the families who struggle the most have seen their paychecks leave for other countries. So we drove toward a 20% rate so our local businesses can compete and win anywhere in the world, especially here at home, so they can compete and create jobs, compete against China, Europe, Canada, and Mexico, and create jobs here in America as well. It was critically important the rest of the world to understand we're not going to be the doormat any longer. We're not going to stand still for 30 years as they leave us in the dust. We're going to compete and we're going to win and our jobs and paychecks for the middle class families are going to grow. And so permanence for businesses, permanence for families matter. We did create in this new family credit, which I think you ought to take a close look at. I look at our neighbors, you know, not only getting more help with their child, getting more help for themselves in that college kid, and I've got one at home, you know, or that parent coming back to live. And the most important thing about that family credit, it, it doubles the amount of Americans who can finally get help with their kids. This is a family-friendly tax code. And so I'm, I'm very excited about what this brings middle-class Americans, and I think permanence and certainty drives that growth. Drucker. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Can you talk about the political will for Republicans to compromise among themselves and get you forward compared to what you saw with the health care bill, even though you did ultimately pass that? It was a bit messier. And, and, and secondarily, uh, for years, you and other Republicans have argued that all Americans that pay taxes and work should get a tax cut. But with some of the elements of this bill and where your rhetorical focus today, it's clearly on people in a certain position on the income scale. Um, and and it's, it's steered away from the sort of argument you had with Democrats over the past 10 to 20 years and certainly under Obama. Can you talk about that? So first off, the political will is strong and you can see it right here. We have not reformed the tax code since 1986. The world is passing this country by and we're losing jobs and companies as a result of it. So the political will among the members here in the House, as shown by the members of the Ways and Means Committee, is ironclad to get this done because if we don't do this, we will net not get the kind of economic potential that we know we can reach. And the fact that people are living paycheck to paycheck in this country, about half the people are living that, they need a break. So yes, the focus is on middle class tax relief. The focus is on directing that tax relief to the people in the middle and the people who are trying to get there. And that is why we put our emphasis on that tax relief for those people who are in the middle, who are working paycheck to paycheck, striving to get ahead. And what Kevin just said, We've got to modernize our tax code so that we can be competitive again, so that we can keep jobs in this country, so we can keep businesses in this country. We have seen a flurry of U.S. companies moving overseas and becoming foreign companies. That will only increase if we stay at the back of the pack. That is why we have to work quickly to fix our tax system, clean it up, level the playing field, make it more fair, so that we can get bigger paychecks, more jobs, and keep businesses in America, and get businesses coming back home. We're the only country that says to a business, if you make money overseas, keep it there because their tax laws basically don't let you bring it back. So this levels the playing field and gets that money back into our country to invest in our jobs here. That's going to help paychecks. That's going to help competitiveness. And that is why Republicans are absolutely committed to doing this. Yeah. The Bush tax cuts did not result in growth or higher wages or more jobs. Why are you so certain that this will be different? So first, can I just comment, did the speaker just sound like a former chairman of the Ways and Means Committee? <laughs> yeah, he's, I'm he's pretty sure. I know. Yeah. You were he's getting, getting ramped going. up. He's getting going. <laughs> um, so the question was what? But our last experiment with oh, tax, sure. cuts, tax cuts didn't lead to growth or higher wages or more jobs. In fact, quite the opposite. So why are you yeah. So this is a complete redesign of the code. So we can simplify it so much that 9 out of 10 Americans can file using a postcard style system, lowering the rates, protecting more of the first dollars you earn, making sure you have strong middle class relief. But it's more than that. We're not, not just putting higher octane fuel in an old clunker of a tax car. We propose to drive a newer tax car that can compete and win against any country in the world. So that re redesign for simplicity, fairness, and competitiveness, I predict under this tax reform plan, 
America will vault from 31st in the world among our competitors to the top three as the best places on the planet for that next new job, that next new manufacturing plant, that next new research headquarters. That, that's what's different. Casey. I got uh, your forbearance, but if Republicans can't get this done, do you deserve to control the Congress? <laughs> What's your second question? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get this done. You know why? Because the American people are counting on us. We're going to get this done because we told the American people this is what we're going to do if we get this majority. And guess what? We're doing it. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.